How are people around the world dealing with the corona situation? My name is Barbara H. Schmidt and I have interviewed people from more than 20 countries around the world in a 5 hours Insta Live. So here you can see the result from the interview. Enjoy! So nice to have you here, Cristina. From uh, where in Spain are you? Uh, I'm in the north of Spain, in a small city in mm -hmm. the north coast. Uh, the name is Gijón. It's a small province. We have just 300,000 population in my city. And how is the situation with the corona in your city? Because we all know how is the situation in the entire country. <laughs> I can say that the, the situation here it's a little bit better than if we compare with the capital and the big cities, mm -hmm. uh, because the the, cra the cases are in increase more uh, gradual. We can say, and also these things helps because the hospitals are not collapsed. Not okay. collapsed, collapsed at all. I mean, mm -hmm. but the situation, I mean, we follow the, the same measures. Mm -hmm. uh, our measures here are exactly more or less like uh, Italy and the other countries. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just can go out for buy groceries, go to the pharmacy or banks, mm -hmm. and also to take the dogs out, but not longer than, um, more far away than 200 meters. And who is controlling go. that? Uh, the police and the militaries are walking around. Okay. to try to control this because uh, still we have people that try to go out to mm. maybe to travel to their second uh, residence. How is the measures if you want to have two parents that live uh, in two different cities? Yeah, you can't go out, you can't uh, cannot visit any, any friend or relatives. So if you have like, if your parents are separated, so the kids just had to stay in those quarantines mm. and just with one? The kids uh, at the beginning, they are with the first uh, parent, mm -hmm. the mother or father. The lockdown starts, they have mm -hmm. to stay with the with this uh, father or mother. And mm -hmm. they cannot go to visit to the other one. Hey, Christina, as a social worker, how do you see the effect of this corona quarantine uh, order? Social services are uh, facing different problems with the most vulnerable groups. Uh, for example, with the kids, one of the problems that we are facing is the children that, that are uh, puberty risks, some of them or most of them uh, were having some scholarships at schools to get uh, school meals to eat at the schools. So when the schools close down, the problem is that most of the families or these kids couldn't get a proper meal or the proper food uh, mm -hmm. during that days. So there are different services or programs right now that are, are trying to give to these kids uh, at home uh, some catering uh, meals. So more or less they are managing this, these issues. Other cases the, for the homeless people, uh, the governments of the province, different provinces in Spain, they are trying to keep uh, these people safe at different uh, locations. For example, uh, big sports centers or, or big areas, mm -hmm. they are putting all the homeless people inside and giving to, me, to them all the to cover all they need. Um, I'm going to start with uh, to collaborate with Red Cross the, uh, mm -hmm. the following day to start to collaborate with them, uh, with these uh, homeless people in, uh, in my hometown. The, the other thing that I would like to, to say also is, the big problem is about the women that are suffering gender-based violence. Because mm -hmm. during this quarantine calls to the emergency number specific for this issue mm -hmm. have increased by 18%. Oof. This is an, uh, it's another kind of uh, huge problem because these kind of women are stuck, are blocked down with their abuses. Yes. And also for the children that suffer mm -hmm. some abuse. It's a kind of problem that nowadays social services are trying to manage as better as possible, but mm -hmm. it's really hard. But the women's houses are open to, to take those uh, women's needs. 
Yes, uh, there are some centers specific mm -hmm. for them, but the problem is... And are they allowed to, to go to those centers? Yes, the government okay. say that it's allowed, and also there is a um, social campaign mm -hmm. that says that, for example, women that are at risk, if they go to some pharmacy and they ask for a mask 19, if they say uh, asking for mask 19, it means that they are at risk. So okay. pharmacies can manage this situation. It's like a special code for them to try to manage this, this issue as well. But it is really hard because you have your abuser having all the control on you when you are stuck at home. Mm -hmm. So if it's difficult when people is free to go out, imagine or we can imagine how it is when you are 24 hours block at yes. home with, with your abuser. No, not even able to make a call or... Yeah. There are specific number to call, but... Yeah, but I mean, if you have your abuser, they are controlling... Yeah, 24 hours actually. next to you. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really difficult. And the control, it's uh, totally in crisis. Even it's more difficult for them to go out, even for the for go to the pharmacy to say this code, to say mm -hmm. that. Are the government talking about any prognosis when uh, the quarantine is a little bit more open? They are just facing the quarantine like by 15 days to 15 days because uh, so right now they only they are trying to manage more the economical issues for these mm -hmm. uh, small companies and these things on medical staff because we, re we really, really need more medical staff. The problem is also that we don't have enough protection to protect our doctors and nurses, so there are a really high rate of uh, medical staff. Okay, so now with this voluntary work that you are going to be doing through the Red Cross with uh, the homeless people, are you going to have any uh, special protection or any procedures? They say that uh, when I will start, uh, they mm -hmm. have uh, some specific uh, protect uh, and these things. Even the population that I am going to work with, uh, it's supposed that it's not... Um, sick uh, still you need to to wear some protect uh, protective but yeah the problem is the maybe we're going to use it more than one time mm -hmm. this mask of the or this and then they just uh, disinfect this uh, or the ngos or especially mm -hmm. red cross and hospital and medical staff has uh, all the gels and the and the, this kind of liquids but you are not uh, you don't have any fear not because um i don't know it's not the first time that i work with homeless people i mean more like the fear of being out and uh, exposed to this uh, coronavirus yes, and get the corona yeah i, I mean i'm not so scared because um I don't have anything to lose. But at the same time, there are millions of people outside that needs help. The solidarity is more than go to the balcony and sing. It's okay. It's not, I mean, everyone can do whatever they want. But in my case, my, my kind of solidarity is I'm a professional in social services. So I think I, I can offer myself to do something in, in that period. <laughs> Inspirational speech you just gave us here. <laughs> and I hope that's gonna inspire more people. Bring in the solidarity if they have not possibility to engage like as mm -hmm. you are doing, but with small things they can do in the in the daily. Yeah, the, the solidarity bonds even if go go through your window and exactly. ask your neighbor in front of you how are you. I mean the the mental the health, mm -hmm. the mental health these days is absolutely important. So everyone can be soli do the solidarity a solidarity act, just mm -hmm. asking others how are you. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for all those uh, inspirational uh, words you just gave us uh, a solidarity lesson, here, so we all can take with us uh, a bunch of lessons, get inspired, and do uh, the best of us. Bye. Okay. See you. See you. Bye bye. Ciao ciao.